and look at taking the derivatives of inverse functions so once again take two lines make a tab you're actually gonna make two two of those very similar ones but that's okay I can do it in the next video derivatives of inverse functions are actually pretty easy if you just remember one simple rule just remember that this for this it cannot be equal to zero and what this means is it's where f is a differentiable function with an inverse function g where f is a differentiable function with an inverse function g in other words the derivative of the inverse function is 1 over the original the derivative of the original fun function putting g of x into it all right so let's take a look at examples the fastest way by far to do this all right so let's say we had y equals x squared plus 4 norm and find the inverse function and by the way um, the inverse function is not to be confused with exponents, so be very careful understand what the question is asking. Is it talking about exponents or the inverse function? So not to be confused with exponents. So the inverse function is not equal to 1 over y. All right, normally what you would do without this shortcut is you would find the inverse, which means you would substitute the x's and y's, solve for y once again, and this is what you would get. So I'm just going to rewrite this function as exponents so I can take the derivative a little bit easier. So that's going to be equal to plus or minus x minus 4 raised to the power of 1 half. Now taking the derivative of that, bring the half down, subtract 1 from the exponents, so you're going to get negative 1 half. I'm going to rewrite that as 1 over 2 square root of x minus 4. All right, now that I have that, I need to plug y in. Now remember, when y is equal to 29 in the original function, it's going to make it actually x equals now to 29. So you're going to make x equal to 29 and solve for the inverse function. So the derivative of the inverse function is going to be plus or minus 1 over 10. Now that's the long way. So now using the shortcut, so now I've shown you how you do it the long way. If you remember, the shortcut is a lot faster. All it is is take the derivative of the function. So you're going to get... 2x y prime is 2x so now it says when y is equal to 29 in the original function since we haven't taken the inverse of it so you're going to get 29 equals x squared plus 4 solve for x squared so subtract 4 and then take the square root plus and minus so x is plus or minus 5 now once you have that stick it back into the derivative so the derivative at that point is going to be plus or minus 10. Now we can use this shortcut. So the derivative of the inverse function is 1 over the derivative of the regular function put in, in the value. So 1 over plus or minus 10. All right, let's take a look at another example. This is a listening check. Color in example 2. What is the inverse function of x equal to when x is equal to 3? Now we're talking about the inverse function, so therefore when I want to talk about the original function, what is f of x equal to, I'm going to think the opposite. So when x is equal to 3, that's really saying y is equal to 3 because now I'm going to the other function. So when f of x equals blank, when x equals blank. So I'm just going to think about it real quick. So remember it's the inverse, so it's going to be switched because the inverse is already switched. So it's going to be f of x is equal to 3 when x is equal to what number? So that means f of x equals to 3. And then now plug in numbers. I can see that it's going to work for 2. So you just have to kind of plug in numbers and see what's going to be true to give it 3. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just calculating what's going to be true. So I'm going to find out that it's going to be 2. All right. So therefore, when the inverse function of 3 is equal to 2, which is what the question had told me, when x is equal to 3. All right. B. What is the derivative of the inverse function when x is equal to 3? So the derivative using the rule says that you put it 1 over... This is a listening check. Put a box around x equals 3. The derivative of the original function, but a composition of the inverse. So what does that mean? So just looking at what values we have, it's just going to be 1 over f prime of 2, because that's what we found f inverse of 3 equal to was f of prime of 2. So now what is f prime of 2? So let's find out what the derivative is going to be, which is going to be 3 fourths x squared plus 1. And then at 2, it's equal to 4. So now we're just going to plug in 4. So that's our answer, 1 over 4. All right, so a special thing to note is note that the slopes of the inverse functions are reciprocals. 
note that the slopes of the inverse functions are reciprocals. That's actually pretty important because I'm pretty sure that might that'll be an AP kind of question. I'm sure that was a little bit confusing, so let me write down some steps to make sure that we got it because it's actually pretty simple when you start doing it. So let's say we have this example. I'll write down some steps for you. Um, when y equals 2, find the derivative of the inverse function. That's what this is actually going to be asking. All right, so number one, you're going to find x given y, if need be. Number two is take the derivative of the original function. Number three, plug x into derivative. Number four, derivative of inverse is the reciprocal. This is a listening check. Color in the word derivative after four. So let's actually do this. We don't need to find, oh, we do need to find x because we're given y. So find x because we're given y. So that means y is equal to 2 in the original function. What value is going to make this true? So x cubed plus 2x minus 1 is going to make it 2. I'm going to try 1. 1 cubed is 1 plus 2 is 3 minus 1 is 2. So that's true. So it's x equals 1. So I found that. Take the derivative of the original function. So that's going to give me 3x squared plus 2. That's easy. All right. Plug in that value just found. So f prime of 1 equals um, x squared is 1, 3 plus 2 is 5. Now, the derivative of the inverse is just the reciprocal. So we got 5, so the derivative of the inverse is 1 over 5. Simple. It's not as complicated um, as it seemed before. That's just because I'm doing it long. So let's take a look at another example. Let's say we have this. Now with this one, we're going to have some parameters. I'm going to explain to you why in a second. Now let's take a look at the graph of sine x. So it goes through 0, 0, and it looks like a wave like this that alternates between positive 1 and negative 1 forever. Now looking at it, if you try to take the reciprocal of this, it doesn't exist. And the reason why it doesn't exist is because if you take the inverse, it's not going to fail the vertical um, line test. So in other words, if the original function fails the horizontal line test, then the inverse doesn't exist. So let's write that down. The inverse function would fail the horizontal line test, therefore causing the inverse not to exist. Because it crosses more than one point. This is a listening check. Underline horizontal. Underline horizontal. But if we restrict the domain, we would have... So if I restricted the domain to what they've restricted it in the question, I'm going to draw what graph we actually have and we're going to see that we can actually take the inverse. So it's between negative um, pi over 2, which is halfway there, and positive. So what does that graph look like? So it's just this little piece is what we're restricting it to. And as you can see, it passes the horizontal line test because when you take the inverse, it passes the um, vertical. So making it a one-to-one -one function, basically. All right, so let's actually now do the question. So find x given y. So again, you will plug in a half. So sine x is a half. So the inverse sine of x. So basically what value is going to give it a half? It's going to be 30. Because 30 is radical 3 over 2 and remember 1 over 2. So it's, a, it's, it's going to be 30. So x has to be 30, which is pi over 6. All right, so taking the derivative, the derivative of sine is cosine x. All right, then evaluate it at pi over 6 or 30. You're going to get cosine of pi over 6 or cosine of 30. And the derivative of that of 30 is radical 3 over 2. Radical 3 over 2. So now we have the derivative evaluated at that function. Now all you got to do to find the derivative of the inverse is take the reciprocal of that. So the derivative of the inverse function is 2 over 3. 2 over, 2 over radical 3, I'm sorry. We can have a radical on the bottom, so multiply radical 3, radical 3. We're going to get 2 radical 3 over 3. And that's pretty much it. So follow those simple steps. Let's practice. 